Hey everyone, today we are going to bring you another pot's journey, this time a platter. So I'm going to wedge that up, show you the piece of clay, and then we'll get to the wheel and throw it and we'll see how it turns out, right? A platter, platters I throw anyway, I start off with 10 pounds. So we'll see if uh, this one here, the clay. More than 10. Cut. And let's see. All right. So that's eight and three quarters. That's a little bit. And there we are, 10 pounds. Now for a platter, a lot of times you have to use a larger bat. Out of the way. I also like doing uh, platters first since I don't have the splash pan on today. So I'm starting off today with throwing these platters. Hopefully they'll come out okay and uh, be usable for the Fairbanks Fair. Let's see, on our last pot's journey, we used a purple marble. Today, we are going to go ahead... It's always more of a reddish, dark purple, wasn't it? So today, we are going to go ahead and use this blue one. There we go. As you can see, right there. All right, let's get to the wheel and get this thing growing. Here we sped up the video because otherwise we would have been sitting here for 13 minutes watching me uh, throw this platter. And when you add that into all the other things I have to do, we suddenly would have been taking an hour just for this video. So first off here I'm uh, centering the clay. I Definitely on a platter you like it nice and centered because the base becomes so large. I probably over center a little bit on this piece, but that's okay, there's no harm in it. And you have to get rid of like little bits along the edge. Always plenty of water when you're centering. Actually, pretty much any time you're throwing, you want your hands to slide through the clay so you don't want it to catch on your fingertips and, and so forth. Definitely getting it nice and centered. And here I'm beginning now to actually throw the platter, as it were. Uh, I'm pushing down with the side of my hand because I need to get the base of the platter all the way out pretty much to the edge of this bat. Uh, it's a large wooden bat, as you can tell. And it goes out. Sometimes it wobbles a little bit. This bat actually has a little, what, a flaw in it, and it has a tendency to make a little, uh, indent or dent in whatever I throw out that far so I'm fighting that throughout the, the course of throwing this and at certain points in this you can kind of see that the platter has a slight curvature to the rim due to that uh, flaw in the bat and here now I'm opening it up <clears throat> pulling it out nice and steadily lots of water again you have to open it up so that you get your rim and you want to go in a little ways, but not too deep, because then you make the bottom too thin and can cut through it and, and other issues. And here now I'm s uh, smoothing the bottom and compressing the bottom, making it nice and dense and making it nice and smooth. And here I'll actually throw the rim of the platter. You always want to uh, get that just right. And a little bit more work on the bottom here get rid of any marks and so forth that these uh, bits of wood can make sometimes in the bottom use a sponge to kind of smooth it all out smooth out the rim and there we go now 
I'm going to uh, use a wire, well actually the stick here and then, and then the wire to cut it off. Now it can hurt your hands and if you watch this you can kind of see where the wire is. It's not actually that thin but the clay has to go somewhere so the wire is displacing that bit of clay and you can kind of see it through the, uh, through the clay. And there we go. It is all finished and as you can see there's a very slight indentation there on the uh, rim and that was from the air of the bat and we put the gem back in and away we go. It's low to the floor, so hopefully it won't mess crack. It'll dry a little slower, but that's a good thing. There we go. Hey everyone, it's been a couple of days since we threw the platter. And taking a look at it here, it's still too wet to trim. So we're going to continue to let it dry. Probably, I'd guess... At least another three days, probably, before it's uh, ready for trimming. So, it's been a few more days. Today is July 18th, and we're getting ready for the Fairbanks Fair. And we're going to check on our platter here. And it feels like it's ready for trimming. So we're going to pull this out and trim it. Once again, we have sped up the video. Otherwise, again, we'd be sitting here for almost 12 minutes as I trim this platter. Pulled out the gem and flip it over here. Normally I use a tool called a Giffen Grip to hold the piece of pottery down on the wheel, but platters are too large to fit the Giffen Grip, and so I just flip them over on the existing bat, and I actually just use the weight of the platter to hold it in place, so I don't uh, put bits of clay or something around it and attach that to the bat to help hold it in the spot. It's maybe a little bit more risky, but I've never actually had one fly off on me. So this is the way I do it. And here I'm just trying to thin out the bottom and smooth out the bottom. <clears throat> Don't want it too thick. I mean, it is a platter, so it's always gonna be a little heavy because of the size and the amount of clay. But you just wanna make sure that it's not overly heavy and yet can also be baked in and, and everything else. And you want it nice and smooth because the wire can make a little uh, you know, crease there at the bottom when you cut it off the wheel. And most, and here I'm cutting away on the side because that's where most of the weight is, it is along the side, the bottom side, there's this corner to the platter where there's a lot of clay that sits there. And just continuing to trim. Trimming sometimes can be a lot of fun because you're actually finally seeing the finished shape of a piece of pottery. Throwing is also very satisfying, but trimming is as well. Some people find it very uh, monotonous and so forth, but it's nice to actually see what the piece is going to look like in the end. Or at least you have a better idea. Sometimes it can take a little bit of time. You're using these different little tools to cut away. If you're too aggressive, you can actually ruin a piece of pottery. And here I'm checking the weight of it. You know, there's that little dent or indentation from that bat. And we're pretty much finished. There we go. Here, uh, I got the little star stamp and the Make It Alaska stamp because they weren't at the wheel. And just attach those and put the gem in. Right, I'm loading a bisque right now and I've just put in our platter as you can see the marble still sitting on it I'm gonna go ahead and take the marble off obviously before I start the firing but that's where our platter is gonna sit hopefully it doesn't crack during the bisque and it comes out a-okay all right we have the platter coming out of the bisque Looking it over, it is looking good. So we have a successful bisque of this platter's uh, journey. Here is the this little star, if you can see it. 
And we're going to go ahead and drop the blue gem in this again to make sure that we see it every time we go to move it or whatever. And now it'll be time to glaze and decorate it. Here we have my friend Mark, who's going to now draw on the platter. Uh, a few times a year he comes over to the studio and does some drawings on a bunch of my pottery. He does a really excellent job. He's very good at uh, freestyle drawing. He kind of glances at his phone for inspiration of an image. In this case it's going to be fireweed that he draws. And then he just sets to it first with a pencil and then eventually he uh, goes over it with what we've been using as black mason stain. And I sped this up because it takes a solid 24 minutes for him to draw this and paint it. So I don't have a lot to say about his drawing since, well, I do not have this skill, but he does an excellent job, as you can see, and we will watch him work. So he has finished using the pencil and is now onto the black mason stain as he works his way through it. Over the years we've found that you don't want it too dark and you don't want it too light. And we've had many uh, a failure either because the glaze hides the drawing too much or <clears throat> you know things can break or you know, it wasn't dark enough or due to the mess that sometimes the studio is, we end up using the wrong uh, product for drawing, and so it just vanishes. It's also very disheartening when uh, something breaks after all this effort goes into it, but that is the danger. Here he is just about finished, so he slowed the video back down. And he then is going to sign the bottom with our iron oxide. The fun part is making sure you don't mess up the drawing now that uh, it's done. safer way is just to hold it. Decided. So on these he signs and I sign. Okay, signing our platter. Mark already signed his portion, now I'm going to sign mine. It's these platters. joint thing and I'll put a little one eight on here so we know the year. There we go. Here we again sped up the video as I wax the platter. You I don't think anybody would be interested in standing there watching me do this for almost seven minutes. Could I use a larger brush and make it go faster? Yes. Could I get a larger uh, area so I could just like dip the bottom of the platter into the wax? Maybe. It's a pretty large uh, pan we already have for the wax. What we're doing here though is necessary because we don't want the glaze at any point to get on the bottom to where it might stick in the high fire on one of the shells. If it does that, it ruins the whole piece, it'll break, it'll fuse the shelf, and shelving units are kind of expensive. So we don't want to ruin those either. So I have this smaller brush. It's also useful. The smaller brush isn't all that bad because you don't want drips to happen and hit places that you do not want waxed because then 
you won't be able to get a glaze to adhere there, and it'll show the clay body there instead. Pretty much no matter what you do, you can't get rid of the wax once it seeps into the, the clay. And there we go. Time for us to glaze our platter. So first we're going to do the inside, and we're going to pour it. Side of it is done. Now we just let it sit again for a few moments and then I will glaze the rim. It's been a few moments, minutes I should say, and the uh, inside is dried, so now I'm just going to pour the outer edge here. Almost got it all. And there we go. It's now been glazed. I'm going to do uh, a little bit of accent decoration on it. <laughs> no! <laughs> we are now going to. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving me a hard time for apparently starting every video with all right. But we are now going to decorate the rim of the platter. Mark did that drawing. It's now hidden underneath the glaze, as you know. And now we're just going to go ahead. I do have a different brush for larger things like this. However, that other brush is covered in cobalt, and what we're using is a black mason stain. So you don't want to confuse the two. Very, very bad things happen when you confuse the two. Oh, tell us, Father. <laughs> oh, well. I have done decorations that vanish into nowhere because they were used with black mason stain on top of butter yellow that doesn't show up at all instead of the cobalt, which shows up nicely. Or, since we are drawing with the black mason stain, the images that Mark does, if it has a really bright blue rim, it's going to look a little weird. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. Huh? Children, right? I agree. It looks weird. Oh yeah, that's blue. Yeah. The going right there. I'm going to just slightly. I don't want it to warp. There's a very slight. See how it moves right now? Not bad. So I need to adjust the shelf a little bit. Get it to where it gives complete support. Here's the platter. So what he's doing now is adjusting the height of the shelf on that side to make sure that it's level. Because if we put it on an uneven surface, it's going to warp as it fires. I'm not sure if you can hear him with his back towards the camera. That's why I'm repeating everything. His I mutter over here. And as he's well. muttering. He's quite good at that. The skill they teach you in manhood school. <laughs> How to mutter. How to mutter. Let's see. 
I need to find something very thin to slip right there in order to Same thing back there. So each shelf has three supports, so he's having to do that three times just to make sure it's nice and level. He'll test it again. There we go. Alright. Let's see if we can zoom in on that part of the shelf. Casting. Hey, so we are about to take the platter out. You can see it here. It looks really, really good. So let's take it out. And give you a peek. So here is his fireweed platter. We actually have a fully covered rim. So this is a absolutely beautiful platter. And let's look at the back. Make sure there's no cracks. Hey, hey, we have a perfect platter. So, um, very, very pleased. And this is going to be a fantastic piece uh, for us to show. So, someone's going to get lucky and buy it. And here the platter was sold up in Fairbanks to our longtime collector and friend Ozzy. She has a little rule that whenever she buys a piece of large pottery, she has to get rid of a piece because she has so much. So hopefully she is thoroughly enjoying this beautiful new platter. Hopefully you've all enjoyed this video. Now please be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check us out on Facebook as well. You never know when we might have giveaways for doing a show or other special things. Thank you so much.